Shalom everyone, I'm going to continue the series of the great oriental tzaddikim, the Rabbanim. And uh, it's actually something very close to my heart this week because it's my great uncle's uh, Hilula, his yacht site. It actually naturally uh, was in the last week, on the 3rd of Shvat. It was where he passed away back in the English year, 2008. He was born around the year 1919. So he passed away at around, uh, or, 19, or 1920, around that time period. And he passed away at the age of 88. I think it was more 1919. And uh, he's actually from a city in Iran called Kerman, which uh, many, many of you would not have heard about. But it's a city where only it had a recent population in the about 160 years ago. Many, many uh, people moved from a city called Yazd from, from Iran. Many people uh, moved there when there was a famine there about 160 years ago. There was uh, they, a lot of them moved to a city called Kerman. So what is this city, Kerman, before they moved in? Uh, within regard to the dozens of years before, there was uh, uh, a pillage that took place inside that area. And uh, a lot of the houses got uh, ruined. A lot of the places were, became desolate over there. There was a uh, big uh, quarrel, a big uh, fight among the Iranians, different cities. And uh, it was uh, in a very bad state. And uh, at the time, 160 years ago, where they were rebuilding the city, a few Jewish families uh, came and moved in at that stage in time. We're talking about at the year 1860, where people uh, went away from the city of Yaz. There was always a lot of, unfortunately, in that those territories beforehand, a lot of anti-Semitic issues the whole time, just like it was in Europe. There was also uh, people suffered also in Iran and they moved to Kerman. They established a place there and already that area, once the Jewish people moved in, it became very prosperous at that point in time. Uh, Bracha came uh, straight away from uh, when uh, the Jewish people came. And at the start of the 20th century, around the n year 1900, already at that stage, there was 2,000 Jewish people living there. Mm -hmm. So at that stage in time, it became a, uh, a very flourishing uh, Jewish community at that point in time. And uh, it was a place where there was uh, pretty much everyone was Shomesh Shabbat in that area. So there was a lot of... Uh, a vibrant, vibrant, uh, very religious uh, Jewish community. People were learning the, for example, the people were learning every day. Uh, there was a, people were going to Tvilot. There was a, the popular thing to learn over there in Kerman was a Chok Yisrael, a famous book, which compiles of uh, Torah, Nevi'im and Ketuvim with Mishnayot and, and uh, parts of the tractates of uh, the Gemara also, which people were learning every day over there also. So the, there was a fixed time of study of every day over there and there was an elementary school and a Jewish school also there and the synagogue so it was a very uh, close-knit Jewish community in uh, this city called Kerman where everyone was together it was very very united and uh, so uh, Rabbi, so Rabbi Heskia's River Valley later on would end up being the principal for 40 years of the main school over there actually his parents were very uh, distinguished people in the Kermani in the Iranian community their name was uh, Nouriel, who I'm actually, uh, that's uh, my second name is Nouriel. So uh, I believe that's, uh, I'm named after him. And also Esther. And uh, they, uh, Rabbi Hezkiah's Rupavelli was one of 10 siblings over there in Iran. People had the very, very big families over there. And uh, Nouriel was a very prestigious man. His father, Rabbi Nouriel, was a very prestigious man, a Torah scholar, also in uh, Kerman. And uh very respected man in city. Let's just say he was pretty much ahead of the community. And his wife and Eshet Chayil sadly passed away uh, in her 40s at the time. During, I believe it was during the Second World War, where at that stage in time in Iran, there was uh, different plagues coming and different uh, illnesses, possibly as a result because of the war, possibly maybe because of other reasons also. So uh, she very sadly passed away at a very young age. But Nouriel was... Uh, was a pillar of the community, a big tzaddik, and a very prestigious man over there, and uh, ended up raising a lot of great, great children and many, many great families uh, assembled from uh, the various places uh, where the people moved on later on. So as I said before, he, Rabbi Hezkiah's Rebelli was a headmaster of this entire community of the schooling system for 40 years. We're talking, spanning about two generations over there. The school over there in, in the Kerman, in the city, it was the only Jewish school over there. It was called the Otsar HaTorah school over there. The Bet Sefer over there was the Otsar HaTorah school. And he was also an advisor in the place. Everyone came to him for advice. He was uh, like the pillar of the community. He was teaching Torah to everybody. He was uh, he was uh, the Chazan in the synagogue most of the time. He was a Balkoreh also. He could uh, 
the conference, wherever it is, to lane, whichever it was, whichever Parsha, whichever Megillah it happened to be, the Haftorah, Torah, whatever it might have been, he was confident straight away. And actually, it's beautiful to just uh, search him on YouTube. There's uh, various video clips of his uh, davening, his uh, his uh, tefillot and uh, his uh, reading the Torah. It's so beautiful when you listen to uh, the connotations, how he pronounces everything. It's uh, done to the precise uh, accuracy, uh, which he was a master at over there. So he was a, he was a rabbi there, he was a pillar. For 40 years and had many children in uh, Kerman in this city. And uh, everyone came to him at, for advice. He was teaching. He uh, married married many people over there and uh, raised a lot of uh, a big family of uh, of uh, Tzadikim over there. And uh, was the nucleus was a uh, powerhouse of the Torah community in Kerman. And uh, after 40 years, around 40 years, he was uh, the headmaster there, maybe a few extra years, give or take. He moved to Tehran, where many of the Jewish people from Kerman ended up moving. And just before the Iranian uh, revolution that took place in the late 1970s, he finally made Aliyah to Israel at that stage in time. And we're talking about the, the time period when there was a revolution. There was still about 500 Jewish people living in Kerman. So it was only 25% of the population that was in its uh, peak days around. But uh, he moved to Israel uh, just in time and... Uh, Moved to Gilo, to Yerushalayim, straight away. And for many, many years, he passed away in the year 2008. But was learning Torah full-time for 30 years. Obviously, teaching and uh, giving over to the next generation, the 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 two generations down. Torah the whole time. People were coming to him from uh, the Iranian community, from many of the different Sephardi communities, for brachot the whole time. He was a... Uh, everybody knew him in uh, the town, the religious town of Gilo, in uh, Yerushalayim. He was uh, someone with uh, the hugest respect of everybody and he passed away back in the year 2008 i believe in the english calendar date was the 10th of january so we're talking about uh this month uh 15 years ago it was and he passed away at the age of 88 years old over there over there and he was learning full-time and uh and many many other jobs still he was uh he was uh teaching giving drashot while he was in gilo giving brachot and everything else. And it's interesting, since his passing, I don't know if it was before or after it started, They uh, after he passed away, the family actually made a, um, a pamphlet every week, a weekly pamphlet, which was distributed, which is even currently now, 15 years later, being distributed to synagogues all over Israel, especially in Jerusalem, all over Jerusalem. It's called the Or Hezkia. This uh, news, uh, this uh, brochure, where it's uh, filled with the Torah, Torah, Torah every week with different halachot, important issues, which uh, very much recommend uh, anyone to uh, subscribe to or to receive. They're very, very interesting insights to Torah, and probably millions of uh, copies have been uh, distributed in the last 15 years since it's been established. He's left many children, a lot of them are big, great Talmidei Chachamim, big Tzadikim, One, a few of them, uh, many of them teaching Torah, learning Torah pretty much the whole day, many, many di- great descendants of uh, Torah scholars. There's also a uh, kollel established in uh, the area of Gila, also called the Darkei Hezkia, which uh, also is running nowadays, many people learning in his memory. And remember, if from w- one thing I've really got to add about uh, an extra, you know, huge thing about Rabbi Hezkia Zerubabeli, Zechet Tzadik Levracha, he actually, many of the students, he actually taught in Kerman, many even relatives of mine, they ended up becoming great Rabbanim later on, all over the world, especially in Los Angeles, there's a, uh, there's a Zagari family, for example, where there's, uh, they're running pretty much, uh, the main, uh, one of the main Orthodox Persian synagogues where there's a thousands and thousands of, uh, people have been influenced, have been, uh, Makarib, been brought close to Torah thanks to their, uh, their Torah leadership inside that city, the amount of Kirov work they've done is second to none. And, uh, very, very great time with their Chamim, they came, uh, from uh, Iran and uh, learned, I believe, in Ney Israel Yeshiva in Baltimore. And uh, many of the students he had in Kerman, many of their descendants ended up becoming Rabbanim all over America. All of them were very heavily influenced and inspired thousands of people. And many of them are Rabbanim now in Israel, also many of the descendants also. And there's uh, there's people that have been influenced all over the world from him and have become great Rabbanim over there and great Kirov workers and uh, infused inside the next generation of uh 
you know, the people from the Persian descent uh, to a zenith level of uh, Torah, all thanks to him. There's a uh, great people, from, scholars from the Abai family also. And uh, there's also a lot of relatives that I've got uh, cousins, uh, Zerubeli, that uh, also are learning Torah full time. And uh, many, many of the descendants very much has been inspired from him. And uh, so many of us learning Torah full time here in Israel, for example, teaching many of the cousins are teaching all over. And a lot of it is down to his chuyot, his leadership, his, uh, his Torah, his hizuk, which he's done. And uh, may his uh, neshama be protecting us, all of our Israel. At this time, it was a great tzaddik. Passed away 15 years ago, and uh, many of the people, the, 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 uh, very much inspired from live now in Petah Tikva in uh, Jerusalem, and also especially in Cholon. Many of the people from the Persian community from different countries, especially from uh, Kerman, they moved to Cholon. Especially, so there was always a booming a uh, Persian community over there. I'd recommend to search it online. There's not much information, but you know, here I am. I'm trying to do this uh, series here. And, uh, you know, tell over the great stories which aren't told over so much in modern day, especially in the English language. So, uh, may, uh, the oldest chuyot of, uh, Rabbi Hezkiah Zerubbabeli, Hezkiah ben Nuriel or Hezkiah ben Esther be protecting all of our Israel, uh, especially this week, especially we're coming through a turbulent time over Shabbat, what has occurred. And we'll just see brachot and the coming of the Mashiach, Bezrat Hashem. Very, very soon, and maybe we merit to it, we'll do a lot of mitzvot and learn a lot of Torah, do a lot of chesed all over the world. There's Rat Hashem Yit Barach, and I want to wish you all a blessed day and then a fantastic week also, and a Shavuot on Be blessed, guys. Bye.